Well, coming up on today's show, the Renault Zoe becomes the fastest selling used car. Tesla wins an argument against the Ontario government. And why Aston Martin will be first with 800 volts charging. Well, first of all, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Hello, and welcome to the Wednesday, the 29th of August edition of EV News Daily. It's Martin Lee here with the news you need to know about electric cars and the move towards sustainable transport. Thank you to myev.com for helping me make this show. Well, they've built the first marketplace specifically for EVs, totally free, really simplifies the buying and selling process and helps you learn along the way about EVs. It's in North America for now, and USA listeners, very lucky to be able to enjoy that resource and thank you very much to them for helping make this show. We'll kick off with a bit of news, actually, about used cars. For the very first time, an electric hatchback is the fastest-selling used car here in the UK. According to James Fosdyke for Motor One, the 2016 Renault Zoe electric hatchback was the fastest-selling used car in Britain during the month of July. The first time an EV has topped the charts. The little battery-powered Renault took an average of only 18 days to leave a used car dealer's forecourt. That's faster than anything else on the market. Faster, not just faster than any other EV, but any other car on the market. The fastest-selling car in the whole market, not only was an electric car, but was the little Renault Zoe. That is fantastic news. And and listeners of this podcast over the last few weeks and months uh, will have heard me go on about this. Whilst new cars are fantastic and wonderful and we get excited over new cars, and let's face it, a lot of new cars are bought on finance, we've always bought used cars. I'm so excited about over the next probably three to five years as new cars keep coming off those leases and end up on dealer forecourts, People using a resource like myev.com to buy and sell cars. I think that's going to be a real step change in how many people are driving electric cars. The new ones are great. And if you can afford one, then good on you. My wife and I have never been able to afford a brand new car and never gone down the road of finance. We're just weirdos, don't have credit cards, don't do loans, don't do finance. We have a mortgage. And that's it. That's just kind of the way we're wired. I get the fact that nearly everybody gets a new car, either on a a high purchase or one of these personal contract plans, maybe a good old-fashioned loan. Used cars, though, I just think when people start to decide to buy EV used, that's just going to be a defining moment in this whole journey that you and I and everyone else is on. So I'm super excited about that. Well done to the Renault Zoe. Well, moving on to Tesla, and something of a relief for Canadian listeners, a judge in Ontario has agreed with Tesla in their recent complaint that the government there was discriminating against Tesla with one of their recent changes of policy by removing the phase-outs of the, if I'm honest, very generous EV incentive. It's a story that's been a little misreported because they're not taking away incentives Uh, for EV owners, for Tesla owners completely. Instead, it was all about the phase-out. It was just as the Model 3 ramp, frankly, was increasing, and a load of cars are arriving in Canada, all Model 3s, all of a sudden, a new government and a $14,000 rebate scheme, which is very generous, is being phased out. However, it was denied those who were early reservation holders of Tesla Model 3s who had been waiting for their car for years. It was July the 11th that the rebate was removed, and the government said this, and I quote, inventory that dealers have on lots or orders made by dealerships with manufacturers on or before July the 11th will be honoured for the incentive provided that the vehicle is delivered to consumers and it's registered and plated by September the 10th. Well, then there was a backtrack. It turned out that Tesla owners wouldn't get that September the 10th date, but it was being backdated to the July the 11th announcement because, according to this slight tweak of wording, the Tesla service centres are not franchised dealers. They are. They do have to have dealer licences, but they're not franchised dealers, which was the word that was added to discriminate against Tesla. Well, Tesla told Electric, I quote, We're pleased with the court's decision to strike down the ministry's transition plan as unfair and unlawful. Tesla only sought fair treatment for our customers, and we hope the ministry now does the right thing by delivering on its promise to ensure all EV owners receive their incentives during 
the wind down period, end quote. And I'll put a link to the electric article in the show notes. Well, Porsche were always, thir- for, were always thought to be the first uh, with an 800 volt battery system in its 2020 Taycan EV. It's spelt Taycan, but pronounced Taycan, in case you <laughs> hear it said differently or, or otherwise. Uh, prior to last weekend's Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance, the Aston Martin CEO, Andy Palmer, tweeted a photo of the forthcoming 800 volt system to be built into an electrified version of the existing. Uh, rapid e slash rapid uh, sedan, however you want me to say it. And now we've got some more detail from Andy from an, a Green Car Reports article. I've been speaking to him. Uh, Andy Palmer told Green Car Reports the forthcoming rapid e slash rapid electric 800 volt car uh, will be available late in 2019, calling the Porsche technology fabulous. Andy Palmer said. His own Rapid and 800-volt charging system will be a precursor for the revived Aston Martin Lagonda brand. Now, Lagonda is going to be 100% electric, and with that comes some trepidation. He said this, and I quote, Because no one's done it, no one has any clue whatsoever about how our luxury customer will use an electric car. End quote. Uh, to experiment with Aston's drivers, with battery cars and with charging, Aston will sell only 155 cars to customers that Aston Martin will choose because we can, he says. Uh, the Rapide slash Rapid E uh, will be a limited edition model that will only be sold to customers willing to give qualitative feedback on how they use the car. I'll put a link to that article in the show notes. Well, Pininfarina has revealed a brand new teaser image of its upcoming all-electric supercar, and it's codenamed the PF0. And it's been shown to prospective customers in private viewings at uh, what I just mentioned, the weekend Pebble Beach Concourse d'Elegance. According to Auto Express, the final car is going to be revealed next March at the 2019 Geneva Motor Show. And a glimpse shown in Auto Express reveals the rear end of the forthcoming Tesla Roadster rival, It suggests a radical rear aerodynamic profile incorporating a pair of large, flat-floating rear wings with integrated LED taillights. While the firm claims that the first fully electric PF0 is going to be the most powerful Italian sports car on the market, capable of doing 0-62 to miles an hour in less than two seconds, a 250 mile an hour top speed, has been targeted, Pininfarina says, while the PF0 will be capable of 310 miles between charges. And I'll put a link to that Auto Express article in the show notes for you. Well, researchers from China and the US have found that long-term exposure to air pollution impedes cognitive performance in verbal and math tests. In other words, pollution makes you stupid. According to Green Car Congress, that's not their shortening of that story, that's me. Uh, In a study published in Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, um, they report that the effect of air pollution on verbal tests becomes more pronounced as people age, especially for men and those less well-educated. It suggests that the damage on the ageing brain by air pollution likely imposes substantial health and economic costs considering that cognitive functioning is critical for the elderly, for both running daily errands and making high-stake decisions. Well, how many more bits of evidence do we have to hear? We hear stories like this daily, whether it's the effects of diesel pollution causing people's hearts to literally change the physiology inside them, whether it's because we push our children round in buggies and prams at exhaust level, and because their immature tissues are more susceptible to damage. We're literally poisoning our children by driving diesel cars and pushing them in buggies at the exhaust pipe level. Every day we're hearing these stories, and every day it means we should be trying to move to a cleaner, greener, more sustainable form of transport. And you know what? And EVs are more fun to drive anyway, so we can get there quickly if we all get behind it. Well, Daimler, Daimler engineers go undercover to get some inside knowledge on the competition. This is one of my favourite stories, not just of the week. This is one of my favourite stories I think I've ever reported on because it makes me smile. When Daimler 
uh, slash Daimler, uh, I get complaints, whichever way I say it, uh, wanted to examine one of their competing vehicles, the DHL electric street scooter. What do you think they did? Well, the German newspaper Der Spiegel writes that when street scooter development had progressed far enough recently, DHL, the manufacturer, rented some trial vehicles to some possible customers so they could see whether the electric trucks they'd made fit their needs and to give feedback. Now, amongst those trial renters was a new nurse care service from near Frankfurt, and they were willing to test it for patient transport, according to Autoblog. The thing is, that nurse care service near Frankfurt, well, it didn't really exist. It was the result of some creative thinking by the competition, by Daimler. The truck's engineers quickly looked at the location of the test vehicle GPS and they discovered that it had been driven across Germany to the Daimler factory in Stuttgart and later the truck was spotted at the company test track. So the street scooter team went round there and knocked on the front door and said, "Um, excuse me, uh, you're not a nursing company. You're the competition. Can we have our van back, please? Well, it took half an hour, but they got their electric van back, please. It does go to show, although I, I do smile, it does go to show the high stakes that people will go to for market intelligence and for market research. And there's millions, hundreds and billions, potentially, of dollars on the line to get this trucking service right. And people are looking at the Tesla Semi and the Nikola motor. And not only are they scouring every article and questioning every spec, which Elon Musk says, yeah, the Semi will do this and this and this. And they're saying, no, we don't believe it, we don't believe it. Secretly, they're thinking, well, uh, if that's true, we need to do the same thing. And look at the lengths that they will go to. I like It makes me smile, but I suppose there's a serious side of it as well. There is so much at stake on this, the lengths that people will go to. Well, the Edmonton Transit Service, the ECS in Alberta, has ordered 25 new 40-foot Proterra Catalyst E2 Max vehicles. It's going to replace 25 of the agency's existing diesel buses, uh, says Betsy Lillian for NGTnews.com. In addition to the environmental benefits, these new electric buses from Proterra are expected to deliver big cost savings of 30%, and Proterra will initially supply the city of Edmonton with two electric buses for infrastructure and charging verification, then a, a total of 25 to put into the service by summer of 2020. Well, a couple of stories to go, and this one's a really cute one, Vespa. Everyone loves a little Vespa, a little Italian cute Vespa. So chic, so stylish, dashing around the city on a Vespa. But their first fully electric scooter is called the Electrica. Not Electrica, but Electrica. The Electrica. It sounds like I'm saying Electrica wrong, but I'm not. The Electrica uh, will go into production in September and be available for purchase in the US at the beginning of next year. Well, the announcement was made by Piaggio, the parent company of the Italian scooter maker, according to The Drive. Now, according to that statement, the Electrica has a... This sounds weird saying it like that. It's like i got a speech impediment. The Electrica has a lithium-ion battery that's designed to deliver 60 miles of range per single charge and can be recharged in four hours. Piaggio also claims... The battery should last a thousand charge cycles, which is roughly thirty-one to forty-three thousand miles. The maximum speed wasn't confirmed, but an alleged eco mode will limit the top speed to preserve energy. I'll put a full link to that drive article online on the show notes. And finally, and and finally, the chief executive for the French oil and gas giant Total said earlier this week that he and his wife drive an electric car. But only at the weekends, as it was an oil event he was making the statement at, he had to play to the audience, I imagine, and say, when it comes to business, of course, he still drives on fossil fuels Monday to Friday. But the implied message is, when he's off the clock and he wants to have fun, both he and his wife have bought electric cars. Nice one, sunshine. Right, on to our big thank yous of the day. Our latest friends on Patreon, thank you so much. Simon Yap, for being a supporter of the podcast. Simon, you're a legend, sir. John Aquilina, or maybe Aquilina. John Aquilina, a new supporter of the podcast and a new executive producer of the podcast. Thank you so much, John. That is very, very kind of you uh, to help make this show happen. And Matthew Gruby, 
or is it Matt Greeby? We'll go with Matthew Greeby because that's your, that's how it's come through on my email. Thank you so much. You too are an executive producer of the podcast and helping it get out there to thousands of people every single day. Uh, how much you do you spend on charging is our question of the week this week. If you have an EV, let's help out all the listeners of the show who are EV curious and let them know. Since you've got an EV, how much of your electricity bills changed at home? I'll compile those and read them out this weekend, but I've, it's fair to say i been very impressed with the replies so far, including uh, one of the replies today, which is, you know, I own a Tesla with free supercharging. Zero. If, if I ever charge it at home, it's rare. So I'll collate all of those. And thank you very much to myev.com for setting this week's question of the week. I want to say a heartfelt thank you to the 69 patrons of this podcast whose generosity means I get to keep making the show and I take your support really seriously. Uh, it aims hopefully to entertain and inform people all around the world now. Thousands of people listen to this podcast every single day. Uh, by no means, if you're listening to this show now, do you have to check out uh, Patreon. It's patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. And you can support from just $5 a month the price of a of a fancy coffee. If you fancy giving up one of those a month and helping out everybody receive this show, that's patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. There's 225 previous episodes online for free on all the usual places. If you can leave me a review, that would be amazing. A little five-star rating or, you know, one star if you don't like it. And come and say hi on the socials on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.